Finally, I got it hard on Maddie's door. And pretty soon, her dad opened the door. When I saw him there, looking down at me with sweat standing out of little droplets on his upper lip, I couldn't say anything. I just stood there with my knees shaking and stared at him. The gift of friendship is one of the most valuable treasures in life. There's nothing you wouldn't do to protect the ones you love. But what happens when you never see or even again? This is Missing Maddie by Peg Carey. Last year on the first day of school, Mandy and I walked together. I miss Mandy a lot. It might not be so bad if I can write to her and get letters back from her, but to have her leave like she did and not know where she went, well, that's the hard part. I always wonder what happened if I told sooner. Would she still move away and not let anyone know where? Last year when school started, I didn't know anything about Maddie's trouble. She never told anyone, not even me. I always thought she wore long-sleeve shirts because she liked them. I didn't know they would cover up the bruises. One day, Maddie came to school with her hand in bandage. She said she burned me baking cookies. That day, our teacher, Miss Linden, asked me to stay after school. When we were alone, she asked me if I thought, had, if I thought Maddie had really burned herself baking cookies. I told her, Maddie wouldn't pretend to be burned if she wasn't. Miss Swenson was sure the burn was real, but she wasn't convinced it was accidental. I didn't know what she meant. And then one night, Maddie was supposed to come over to my house so we can study, and she didn't come. When I went to her house to go get her, I heard her crying. What's worse, I heard why she was crying. I can hear her dad beating on something fierce. I got a sick feeling inside and I didn't know what to do. Finally, I found a heart on Maddie's door. And pretty soon, her dad opened the door. When I saw him there, looking down at me, who sweat standing out in little droplets on his upper lip, I couldn't say anything. I just stood there with my knees shaking and I stared at him. He told me Maddie wasn't feeling well and for me to go home. I did, I went home. I couldn't stop shaking even after I put my pillow over my head. The next day, I didn't go to school. I told Mama I felt sick, and that was the truth. If I told her would things have turned out different, I could have told her. But when I went back to school, none of us said anything about that night. A few weeks later, Mandy showed up with a cast on her arm. When she told me, she said she fell down her basement step, but when she told me, there was an odd, fair look in her eye. That day, I stayed out of school, and I told Miss Swenson about standing on Maddie's front porch. Miss Swenson kept nodding at me as if she wasn't all surprised. After I was done, Miss Swenson asked, told me that I'd done right to tell her. I didn't know if I was right or not. That day, the police showed up to her house that afternoon and Mandy wasn't there. The next day they went and Mandy was gone. Her and Dad must have moved out in the night because nobody knows where they went and nobody knows where they could have gone. Miss Winston isn't my teacher anymore. And this year I walked to school alone. I hope Mandy isn't walking alone wherever she is. I hope she has a friend to talk with. Most of all, I hope she's wearing a shirt with short sleeves.